Okay, well, thanks, guys, for coming. I think um, this week there's been a lot of negativity in college football, but I think today is about, um, for, our, for us three, about where our conference is at and where USC is at. It's an extremely exciting time for our conference. Um, I think that starts with our leadership, Larry Scott and his, his entire group, really taking the Pac-10 at the time to the Pac-12 and now to the next level of national exposure with the TV contract and the exposure that brings us. I think our conference is extremely competitive from top to bottom. I think you're seeing a lot of great coaches today and a lot of great players on each team. And so there are no easy games. Uh, the conference is extremely competitive. And I think when you add four dynamic coaches, uh, like what happened this off season, really takes us to the next level. I think at USC right now, we kind of feel like we're in a perfect storm. With, with so many good things going on. We feel great about our current team, but we also feel great about our future teams for years to come. I think that, that really starts as well with great leadership and support. Our president, Max Nikias, and our athletic director, Pat Hayden, have been unbelievable in their support of our football program and, and of our coaches, but as our, of our players as well. Um, basically this week, we're basically moving into the John McKay Center. I think it's the, it's the best student athlete center in the country. To have all of our sports there together is very, very exciting. And, and walking through the building just yesterday as it's almost done, uh, I think it's just, it, it's going to be a very special place for us. I think our coaching staff, our assistant coaches have had a great off season as far as getting ready for the season coming up, but also in recruiting. They really ha have had a nonstop effort the entire off season here. And I think strong leadership uh, by the two guys that are up here today. Uh, strong senior leadership in our program as we go through our offseason where obviously our coaches can't do very much. The preseason number one ranking and all the questions that we've gotten um, throughout the summer, but especially today about that, that has nothing to do with how well we'll play next year or whether we'll win those games. But I do think that's exciting for our university. I think it's exciting for our fans to be in those discussions. You know, we're two years removed from what was hand, handed down is a lot of people saying for five or 10 years, SC is over. And to, to be in a conversation about being a preseason number one team two years later is extremely exciting for our university and for our fans. Um, I do think at the same time, we do have a lot of issues. We have a very challenging schedule. Uh, we will have less players than everybody else that we play. And so we're gonna have to manage that. Um, our number one concern is our running back position. We're very concerned about our depth there. and. Um, we know what we have at quarterback, we know what we have at receiver, and we know people are gonna to try to take those guys away. And so we're gonna get a lot of seven-man boxes, a lot of opportunity for, for a running back to make plays in our system. So uh, we really have to do a good job there developing some depth at running back. With all that being said, um, we're extremely excited about the season, about getting back to work. Uh, it has been a great off season for us, um, starting with these guys deciding to stay here and then um, going through the, through the off season as they can talk about their Haiti trip as well. 16 of our players took part of that. That is something we are in the process of trying to continue every, every year uh, to give our players that opportunity and these guys can speak about that. So with that, thanks. Lisa Horn, Fox Sports, this is for Matt Barkley. Um, when did it first hit you that you were thinking about guiding a team to a possible bowl. I mean, what were your emotions at the time? Was it jubilation or was it more relief? I'm, I'm talking about when it really started to sink in that right now USC is bowl eligible. What was going through your mind? I mean, I think anyone in that position would, would be happy. And, and I certainly was just thinking of the possibility. And, and, it, and it'll always be a possibility. It's still a possibility. Um, it, you know, it's not guaranteed at all. And um, just the fact that we have the opportunity to do that this year and with, with the team that we have and, and, and the character that we have. And I mean, you know, these guys are my best friends and you kind of saw it towards the end of last year, how much fun we were having playing for each other, playing together. You know, I think we, we, we got to just keep playing like that this year. You know, we can play for a national championship. We can't play for that bowl game, but we can't forget how we, how we got here. And we were, we were playing for, playing for your buddy as, as you know, our running backs coach says, and, um, playing for each other, and that brought us closer together. And so you know, I think especially this year, we, we can't forget to do that. Lane, you've dealt with NCAA sanctions. What advice would you give Penn State coach Bill O'Brien about dealing with what he faces now? 
Well, Ted, I think that going through what we went through, you realize how hard it is to deal with a situation where, like everyone else, we're recruiting high school players, but now we have to turn and recruit our own players to stay. And um, we were in a situation where our juniors and seniors could leave. Obviously, they're in a situation where everybody can leave without penalty. That, that's not easy. Um, you have coaches around the country calling your players, flying them for official visits, your current players, uh, why they're in summer school. And they're flying on weekends, going to places. And a lot of times, it's not your premier players. It's your backup sometimes that other schools are saying, well, come here. You can start for us right away, even though you're a backup there. So uh, there's nothing easy about it. And then on that same note, dealing with players who can leave, uh, you guys and Silas Red, uh, uh, what, what is USC's interest level in him? And what are you guys doing to, to check it out? Yeah, we, we can't speak on, on any kids on their roster. They're just like high school kids at this point, so we, we can't say anything about it. This question is actually from Matt Barkley and TJ McDonald. Um, when you said you had unfinished business beyond having the opportunity to compete for a national title, what does that mean for this team overall? Well, when you know TJ and I decided to come back, uh, we knew that you know we, we've had a, a great time at USC. And we've had a lot of fun playing football, but we we hadn't, I don't think, maximized our our potential here at USC. And so, you know, I think that that phrase "unfinished business," you know, it has to do with finishing at a top level and and finishing at what we're we're capable of as a team. And you know, every goal, I think of every you know every team is to win every game and go all the way. Um, and, you know, for this year, I think we both feel and, and a lot of us feel on the team that uh, it's the most realistic of happening. But um, that, that's not me easy by, by any means. Um, but th but that, that unfinished business, uh, that, that, that thought and that, that ideology is, um, is really just one game at a time. And to, to finish, finish those games, finish those games. You see so much about finishing, whether that's a season um, or, or four years at, at college or, or a game even or a fourth quarter, that, that concept of finishing, I uh, just want to end that on a good note. Uh, Lane, first for you, uh, is Nelson Aguilar going to start out at wide receiver, running back? Yeah, our plan up to today has been um, to put Nelson at running back because of the issues there uh, of not outside of, having, outside of Curtis. Really, DJ's played a little bit, nobody else has played. And so um, as of today, that, that's the direction that he's headed. And for Matt and TJ, can you talk about the uh, development you've seen from Marquise Lee a year in the weight program, et cetera, uh, from last uh, fall to now? Yeah, um, <clears throat> Marquise has been developing not just as a football player, but mentally too, uh, off the field. I um, mean, he's becoming a leader on the team. Um, he's been been able to be at all the workouts and um, being able a guy that ran track and play football at the same time and, and a guy that's been putting a, a large amount of work in throughout this offseason. So he's become a leader on the team and for him to be a young guy and be able to grab that, that group of young players too as well and bring them along with him, uh, he's doing a good job with that. Uh, for Matt and for TJ, everywhere you look, USC is ranked one to BCS title game champion perhaps. How are you keeping it all in perspective at this point? Well, I think it's important, you know, I, I keep saying it over and over again. You guys have probably heard me say it today um, of, of one game at a time. And uh, it may sound cliche, but I think it's an approach that you, you have to have. You know, we have all this hype going into this year. And like Coach said, I think it's great for our program, great for our school, for our fan base um, to, to have that uh, towards USC. But for us, it, it doesn't mean anything. And, you know, anything, any hype, any preseason, that, that opportunity to play for a game, it's not going to – win us any games it's not going to score any points um, so we're, we're you know just one week at a time and, and try to be one and all that week tj how impressed were you with your brother tevin's play in his first year last year and how often does he look to you for advice i was really impressed i mean tevin uh he came on the scene pretty late in the seat in in the season as a fresher freshman year and he came on and uh, really, you know, kind of stepped on the scene with uh, his game versus Cal. He had uh, three interceptions in the game, and uh, that actually came after the Stanford game for us. So I was kind of down at first, and I heard the good news about him, and I uh, kind of brought light uh, to the whole situation. But uh, for him, you know, I'm proud of him. I'm proud of what he's been doing, and, and you know, if he comes to me and asks questions, or we'll, we'll watch film together, but not, not on each other's film. But um, 
was just 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 to get get a sense of what's what's going on and and just to pick my brain a little bit and even even the same way uh, for me to him. So uh, he does, he's doing a good job. I'm really proud of him. Uh, TJ, the defense really came on during the, the second half of the season. How's that momentum kind of translated into the spring and into the summer uh, for you guys as a defensive unit? I think it's just been being our third year in the system. Um, even though we had a uh, you know a kind of a young defense, everybody's learning what they're doing. Everybody knows what's expected from the coaches, and, and everybody knows you know just 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 what the what the course is. And um, you know for us, it's just making sure that we stay on that course, and make sure that we know exactly what we're doing, keeping everybody on track, and uh, you know stepping up the turnover margin, trying to make sure that we go after that ball, and that's what we've been trying to do all spring ball, and that's going to carry with us um, into fall camp, and just going after the ball. And uh, as long as we do that, I think that we'll be fine. And we've got a, we've got a great offense to go against every day in practice. So that can only make us better.